हेलो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार एज यू ऑल नो दैट द फिनेंशियल ईयर 21-22 वंस इट इज एक्सपायर्ड द टाइम टू फिल द आईटीआर फॉर द असेसमेंट ईयर 22-23 हैज रीच टू सो इफ यू आर अ पर्सन हु वांट्स टू नो दैट वेदर इट इज मैंडेटरी फॉर यू टू फाइल योर रिटर्न फॉर द असेसमेंट ईयर ट्वेंटी दिस वीडियो इज गोइंग टू बी सर्टनली यूजफुल टू यू so my dear friends the first question which i would like to put up before you is what is the basic exemption limit for the assessment year 22 23 what is basic exemption limit this is also one important question see the point or to use the term basic exemption limit i mean to say that the criteria for determining whether you have to file the itr or not is generally with reference to the basic exemption limit for a particular assessment year say for an example for the assessment year 22 23 precisely speaking if your age is below 60 years that is you have not touched 60 years during the relevant financial year then your basic exemption limit is 2.5 lakh if your age is over and above 60 year but less than 80 year then your basic exemption limit if you are a resident would be 3 lakh and if your age is over and above 80 years then in that case your basic exemption limit is 5 lakh so with reference to the basic exemption limit generally it is determined that is it mandatory for a person to file the itr or not however whether this basic exemption limit is the criteria of total income or is it the criteria of gross total income that is also an important question which i will solve in my next discussion now the next question is of paramount importance and it is a very important question if your gross total income is above basic exemption limit but total income is below basic exemption limit whether itr would be required or not to put up this particular thing for your understanding let me exemplify say for an example your total gross total income that is income computed under all heads plus clubbing after adjusting losses is 3.75 lakh rupees and you say mr bhati i have invested into atc like lic ppf etc 1.25 lakh rupees so i am net net 2.50 so i am not exceeding basic exemption limit and i assume that your age is say 35 year then in that case you are prima facie exempt from itr it is not so my dear friend a very important point see section 139 which is a very important section of filing of itr provided under income tax act 1961 it says that the criteria for determining the quantum of income from the point of view of whether it is mandatory for an individual assessee to file itr or not is not total income it is gross total income so this is right criteria this is not now if you go by 3.75 lakh rupees gross total income for a 35 years aged person about 2.5 lakh he has already satisfied so can i say is it mandatory for this person to file itr the answer is yes so a very important aspect which you can touch upon through this particular video is that the criteria to determine the income from the point of view of itr filing is not total income the criteria is gross total income so you have to go by that approach now another important query which i may put up before you is what if the total income is nil or negative in many a cases it may happen that your total income comes to nil or it ultimately turns into a negative figure then is it mandatory for you to file the itr let me try to answer this question also say if under one head you have 12 lakh rupees of income say business uh, this is uh, capital gain income under another head you have business losses of rupees 12 lakh and if i assume that your capital gain can be adjusted against the business losses of 12 lakh so ultimately your total income is nil if you ask me technically whether it is mandatory for such person to file itr my answer is no sir not mandatory but you understand a person with 12 lakh capital gain and 12 lakh rupees business loss and he is not filing itr at all how would department know that ultimately he has nil income because of these two adjustment so it is practical to file itr yet it is not mandatory similarly sir, there are two very important cases when you have business loss or you have i call it pgvp or you have capital gain loss say 10 10 lakh under both diets and you want to carry forward them 
Then section 139 of income tax law says, if you want to carry forward any business loss or capital gain loss, you have to file ITR otherwise and that too should be filed within 139 one due date. Say normal cases 31st of July. So if you don't do that, you will lose your right to carry forward. So practically, when you have negative income, you should file ITR, particularly when such income is a loss under the head business profession or under the head capital gain. Another question which is also important, what if the capital gain is exempt under section 54 to 54 GB? Say for an example, if a person sells off a property for rupees 65 lakh, which he purchased for 40 lakh rupees and this is a flat. Okay. Now, what capital gain long term is in hand? I am assuming in his hands there is a long term capital gain of 25 lakh rupees. Now, loss is under section 54 that if this person invests this 25 lakh rupees into another flat, then in that case his capital gain will be ultimately 25 minus 25 that is nil. And if it becomes nil, then his ITR filing requirement would also go away. Or suppose rather than investing into a flat, he purchases NHAI rural electrification bond of rupees 25 lakh, then also capital gain tax liability would be nil. But as I mentioned earlier, the provisions of section 139, I would repeat, sir, in section 139, there is a proviso which says that for the purpose of ITR filing, we will see the total income without giving the benefit of chapter 6a deduction, which I have discussed earlier, and without giving the benefit of section 54 to 54 GV, that is capital gain exemption. Meaning that, that to determine whether this person is required to file ITR or not, we will not give consideration to the exemption. And if we will not consider exemption, it is not that exemption will not be available, that will be available. But for ITR filing purposes, mind you, my dear friend, the threshold will be fixed up with reference to the income without exemption. And that comes 25 lakh in the present case, which is about 2.5 lakh if the assessee's age is below 2, below 260 year. Then in that case, we will say, yes, sir, you are supposed to file ITR. This is also an important criteria you should take care about. Now, three more important aspects when the ITR filing would be a must for a person. That is, who else is required to mandatorily file ITR? If during the previous year, you have deposited an amount or aggregate of the amount exceeding rupees 1 crore in one or more current accounts maintained with a bank or cooperative bank. See, my dear friends, that when you are a businessman and you have deposited in one or more current accounts, rupees 1 crore or more in a financial year, then in that case, you are liable to file ITR whether you have profit, you have losses. Similarly, if during the previous year you have incurred expenditure of an amount or aggregate of the amount greater than 2 lakh for yourself or any other person for travel to a foreign country, then also it is mandatory for you to file ITR. Say a person is a sponsoring some education tour of his son wherein he is incurring some tour and travel cost to the foreign country of rupees 3 lakh, even if his income is below basic exemption limit, ITR filing would be a must. And the third condition, if during the previous year you have incurred expenditure of an amount or aggregate of the amount greater than 1 lakh rupees in a financial year under the head consumption of electricity, then also it is mandatory for you to file ITR. So these three additional criteria are also important for you to determine whether ITR filing is mandatory for you for the assessment year 22-23 or not. Now this is a category which I am going to discuss is applicable to those who are ordinarily resident individual in India. See, when we determine the residential status of an individual, it could be resident and ordinarily resident or it could be resident but not ordinarily resident. So if you are a resident and ordinarily resident and you are holding as a beneficial owner or otherwise any asset including financial interest in an entity located outside India or you have signing authority in an account located outside India or you are a beneficiary of any asset including financial interest in an entity located outside India in these two circumstances it really becomes mandatory for you to file ITR in India and then you can't skip it. Mind you my dear friends the filing of the ITR which is mandatory is a very important point for any SSE to understand because if he is not filing mandatory ITR, he is attracting the income tax department attention towards him and 
the experience is that those who are regularly filing their ITR, they are in more beneficial comparison to those who are not filing their ITR. So, if you are holding any uh, asset outside India, but you are a resident and ordinarily resident, or you are handling, hand, handling any signing authority in an account located outside India, then you must file your ITR in India. One more important question which is asked to me nowadays is, what if after claiming rebate under section 87A tax payable is nil? Say for an example, if we take a case under which a person is having 4.5 lakh rupees total income, 2.5 lakh rupees of the basic exams element, on this incremental income about 2.5 lakh, 2 lakh rupees is there. On this 2 lakh rupees, suppose his tax liability at the rate 5% would be 10,000. He may claim, Mr. Bharti, I am entitled to avail rebate under section 87A up to 12,500, but maximum of the tax amount payable, hence my tax liability is nil. Do I need to mandatory file ITR? My answer to this question would be, yes, sir, no doubt you are supposed to immediately file ITR. So, 87A rebate is not a criteria for not filing return. You have to go back to the first thing which I discussed, that if under section 139, your gross total income without giving benefit of chapter 6A, without giving benefit of capital gain exemption, exceeds basic exemption limit, it is mandatory for you to file ITR in India. One more category, if you are a senior citizen, who has opted for section 194p. See, with a Finance Act 21, that is 2021, assessment year 22-23, this is the first year. The Government of India has given option to the senior citizens that, okay, if you are a specified senior citizen, that is individual resident in India, who is of the age of 75 years or more at any time during the previous year, who is having income of the nature of pension and no other income except the income in the nature of interest received or receivable from account maintained by such individual in the same specified bank. And you have furnished a declaration to the specified bank containing such particular in such form verified in such manner that is form 12BA. Then the bank would ensure that all tax which is due on you is duly deducted and deposited and you are then exempted from filing ITR. So, such senior citizen who have opted for this form 12BA, they are exempt from filing ITR. So, before I end today's session, I must say, my dear friend, that being a consultant, I keep on suggesting to my clients and even to public at large, wherever I meet, even on my YouTube videos, that it is better that you file return rather than non-filing of the return. Why it is so important, sir? That filing of ITR is not only important from the point of view of income tax department, but also from the point of view of availing whether uh, various benefits by way of a bank loan, by way of any being eligible to claim any category of income under some government scheme. Even in the insurance claims also sometimes it is seen that what was the income of a person to whom a compensation is payable. So all these things make it really practical to file the ITR. So, I keep on suggesting even if your income is below exemption limit, nobody stops you and nobody can stop you from filing ITR. So, you should think of filing ITR that is a better practice rather than not filing an ITR. So, I hope you will find this video useful to you. Thank you very much for listening to me. Wishing you all the best. Jai.